Canon Films, the home of high-powered, high-voltage motion picture entertainment. We've got high-flying action, electrifying explosions, death-defying stunts, mass-scale death. And now, we bring you the feel-good family film of the year. Huh? Huh? We're Canon Films, and we're Dynamite. Hey guys, we're back for another one. And this time we're checking out the 1988 Canon Films presentation of Going Bananas. This is seriously the worst fucking movie that I've watched since I've started doing this. It's horrible. I wanted to turn it off and give up, but I had already committed to doing it. So this is for you. I suffered through this fucking thing for you. So I hope you enjoy this. So if you like these kinds of movies, I'm sure you're familiar with Canon Films. They created mostly big action movies throughout the 80s. Uh, vehicles for Chuck Norris. Uh, they did a whole bunch of completely insane uh, Death Wish movies with Charles Bronson. And they did a lot of movies with my personal favorite, Michael fucking Dudikoff. So for some reason, they decided they were going to make a family film in 1998. And the result was going bananas. This movie was the brainchild of Maniam Golan, who is, I'm going to go ahead and say it, a golden god of the film industry. A golden god. So the story of how this is made is sort of documented in that Electric Boogaloo documentary. And I guess that what happened was Maniam Golan was going to have access to the ape from Any Which Way But Loose, which was a Clint Eastwood movie where he has a monkey. And he, based on having access to this monkey, he, like, in 10 minutes came up with a story, this entire movie, and it seems, as you watch it, it seems like a fucking movie that was completely written in five minutes. So the movie stars Dom DeLuise, who was, uh, I don't know, he's in a bunch of random stuff. He just is. He's in that movie, The Godson, uh, Silence of the Hams, whole bunch of hits. It stars uh, Jimmy Walker, you know, the guy, uh, the dynamite guy. Dino and this was made a year after the Canon Films production of the Sylvester Stallone vehicle, Over the Top. You know, Over the Top, the movie about a heroic truck driver who battles through the odds, overcomes the odds, to win an arm wrestling competition. Yes that over the top. Also a brainchild of Manaim Golan, he thought that he spent, there was a whole thing where he paid Sylvester Stallone the most amount of money that like any action star had been paid up to that point because he thought that this arm wrestling movie was gonna be the most fucking successful movie ever made. Spoiler alert, it was not. So over the top is I might go over that one one day because it really fucking creeps me out. The movie is about like uh, Sylvester Stallone and his son trying to uh, rekindle a relationship, but it is full of little pedo moments and it really fucking creeps me out. So after uh, Canon did this film that they thought would be bigger than Rambo, I guess uh, Manheim Golan fell in love with the kid from the movie, David Mendenhall 
because he chose him to uh, be the, the lead actor in Going Bananas, the family film. He said, hey, this kid's great and uh, this movie, he'll be great in this other movie. He, he was not great in a either of the movies. And as you'll learn as we go through this, I hate this fucking kid. I fucking hate this kid. Going Bananas was directed by Boz Davidson, who uh, did a lot of stuff for Canon Films. The most famous one is uh, The Last American Virgin, which I don't know if it was popular or if it was hit a hit or successful, but I remember it personally because it's always been one of my mom's favorite movies. So I saw it when I was inappropriately too young to see the movie. So I guess this is supposed to be a kid's movie. It's really fucking weird. It's, I, I don't know, as you watch it, you're like, is this a kid's movie? Who the fuck is this actually made for? And that's a good question because I don't know. I don't know what, what children this was made for. So we open on this boat that's going to Africa we got Dom DeLuise, we got the kid, the kid's shirtless. Now, I already have issues with this kid in over the top with the pedo moments. So, right from the beginning, this is raising some red flags for me. Captain, my dad has already arranged for a tour guide to take us on safari. A guide, huh? He'll probably eat you. <laughs> well, I guess Manaim Golan wasn't the most sensitive person, you know. They'll eat you, then straight to the tribal person. I, it was the 80s. So we meet Jimmy Walker with this fucking ridiculous accent. I'm looking for Master Benjamin Mastamara of America! plays a guy named Mozambo. Great name, I guess. And his whole thing is that he's gonna be the guide to take them through Africa. Welcome to Africa! Oh, how nice! Now, the, the kid is the son of a senator or something. Uh, the son of a U.S. senator. And Dom DeLuise is like his personal attendant. That's what he says. I'm your personal attendant. Guns, why the heavy artillery? This is dangerous land we're going to. It is not Disneyland. Oh, that does it. Benjamin, get out of that garbage can. No way! But I promised your father I'd take good care of you. I am not a baby, Joe. Benjamin! And don't call me Benjamin! Bo, go! All right, You're the ben. Boss, ben. Let's talk as to where you're going. Mr. Muzamba, wait a minute. Just one second, please. So he's the comically overprotective oaf of the film. Gotcha. Your bananas. I'm so sorry. For goodness sake. Oh, my God. Oh, you're getting in. Ah. Man, Dom DeLuise is just fucking straight uh, racist as fuck. <laughs> just knocking shit over. Did no respect for the culture. He just he fucking dives into that car. I guess it's supposed to be hilarious. It's a zany slapstick laugh a minute riot a fucking riot that's a raw onion Mangunani. good morning <laughs> good morning uh uh mr mazambo could you uh help us out here what, what does he want what are you talking about? uh he thinks that you're an animal smuggler oh no <laughs> no me no likey animal <laughs> so this is what this whole thing is gonna be isn't it that's of course, of course it is. Jesus Christ. So Jimmy Walker is taking them to a place called Mamba Zamba Land because of course he is. Uh, it's some sort of wildlife nature preserve, I guess. Like in Africa, you can go through the wildlife preserve and there's like lions and fucking uh, gazelles and stuff, you know, and uh, rhinoceri. So they jump out and they just start snapping pictures and shit and you see this lion go over to the jeep. So safety is a number one priority. But again, this is the 80s. 
So I guess just no one gave a fuck. Although, I mean, this kid's the son of a U.S. senator, so you think they would have some sort of, like, safety in place. But again, it's the 80s, so even sons of senators, no one gave a fuck about them. This is the kids on milk carton age, you know. But man, I mean, fuck all that. Look at this. What a cute kitty. Look at that fucking kitty. That kitty just wants to play and have a good time. I just... Aww. And then they come out and they scare the fucking kitty away. A bunch of fucking bitches. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning of the... This fucking asshole kid. So the kid and Dino Might go off to look at some monkeys. And this asshole Dom DeLuise sets up an entire fucking smorgasbord buffet for lunch. I mean, he doesn't just like set up a picnic. He sets up a table and all of this shit, like a full-blown meal. So an elephant comes over and spooks him. He shoots his gun off and then spooks the monkeys. And we see this. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this thing is fucking terrifying. I hope you're ready to have fucking nightmares because after you see this monkey enough times, you're gonna have trouble sleeping tonight. So maybe you can send this fucking movie to your enemies and, and you laugh all night about how you've ruined their lives. I know my life has been fucking ruined by seeing this. So... When they were developing the movie and Manaim Golan had access to this monkey, they uh, were going to use the monkey. They started doing screen tests and the monkey bit the kid in the face, which I guess it's fucked up, but I think it's hilarious because I hate this fucking kid. I hate the kid. So they realized they couldn't use the monkey. So instead, what they did was they made the most terrifying monkey costume that looks nothing like a monkey. They found a very small actor who is uh, Deep Roy, who was in, uh, he was all of the Oompa Loompas in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, he was in a bit part in Freaked, and my favorite role of his was as Aaron, the tough guy from Eastbound and Down. Yeah, it's absolutely gross. Hey, what's your fucking problem, man? Why are you giving me this freaking look? He wants to start a fight, dude. Shut the fuck up. Now, what's the mo what's your problem? <laughs> yeah, you want more? <laughs> want to drink beer? I told you, you know? We're going to get you kicked out of this me? motherfucker. So the monkey's hurt, and I guess he's coming along for the ride now with them. And... Our movie's up and running. We're, we're, we're going full steam ahead now. <laughs> and there's, there's this gag with Dom DeLuise where like he's standing there being Dom DeLuise and the Jeep starts to leave like they're going to leave him and he runs and catches up. And this gag happens several times in the movie. It's, it wasn't funny the first time and it's not funny the fifth time. So while Jimmy Walker is trying to fucking run down these emu or ostriches or whatever, he slams into a tree and fucks up Dom DeLuise's t tooth, right? So he starts going on and on about how he has to go to the dentist. But luckily and conveniently, Jimmy Walker has an uncle who is a dentist. A tribal dentist. A witch doctor dentist. My uncle has fixed all of their teeth. Really? Hello? Uh -huh. <laughs> what? What the fuck? <laughs> it's fucking terrifying. I'm telling you. And this is not even like, wait till. Just wait. By the end of this, you're going to be in fucking tears about how scary this is. It's like Slender Man. It's going to haunt your fucking dreams. I demand Novocaine! Who pay Novocaine? <laughs> oh. Drill me, Doc.
Although, check out that dr comically big drill. I guess that's amusing. I don't know. There are a few things in this movie that are sort of amusing, but not quite amusing. They're like almost amusing. So then like as they're leaving Mamba Zamba Land, they go through uh, like a customs checkpoint where a guy is making sure people aren't smuggling animals out of the nature preserve because you shouldn't smuggle fucking exotic animals out of a nature preserve. And the monkey's there, and the monkey starts hitting the, the customs agent. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. So they all go to jail. They get arrested. And this is the start of this fucking bastard kid. He doesn't care because he's an entitled little fucker. He, he can just do whatever the hell he wants to do. But then, so they get arrested in the consulate of, or whatever, he sees that the monkey can be trained, and he's like, oh, ha ha ha, I can sell this monkey to the circus. All right, I'll let you guys go, but leave the monkey. So then we get this, where the monkey rips off the guy's toupee and everyone laughs. Classic monkey hijinks. So they let the kid and his gang go and the, the monkey of course escapes and then he finds them inexplicably even though they have traveled countless miles away and have left no trail of breadcrumbs or bananas for him to follow. Cause it's just, that's what happens. So now they have the monkey in disguise as an elderly woman. Classic lols. <sighs> Hilarious. Could you bring us a menu right away, please? I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. I'm so sorry, sir, but we do not serve horses in this restaurant. Oh, no, no. He didn't mean he wanted to eat a horse. It's just an American expression. Yes, just a figure of speech such as, I am so hungry I would like to eat a zebra, a Pardon, elephant. monsieur, but this is a five-star restaurant, not a, a zoo. <laughs> Look. Oh, Jesus. These kinds of stupid fucking back and forths are like 80% of the movie. I'm not kidding. It's, they're never funny. They're just... God damn it. How can Maniam Golan make so many brilliant films such as Invasion USA or uh, American Ninja 2? And then... I digress. Hey, maybe he wanted to sell our monkey to the circus. Our monkey? Our monkey. He has claimed fucking ownership over this monkey that he was around for, let's say, two hours. Now he owns it. Stole it from a nature preserve. Now it's his. So we get the monkey under the table and he's destroying everything. And all these kids are laughing because you know what's hilarious? Property damage. Hilarious. This was the first point where I really just wanted to hit stop and turn this fucking thing off, but I it's too late. I committed to it. I committed to reviewing this thing. So we're all in this together now. Mm-hmm. I'm if I'm going down, I'm taking you down with me. So let's give let's keep going. He is not your monkey. So go away and don't come back. He is my monkey. Ah. You don't go let him go. Get away or I'll kill you. <laughs> hey, look at this fucking little prick. He's out of control. He like attacked a military guy. He fucking hit someone with a chair. He's a fucking menace. I've... 
I really want to see this kid get injured. There are a lot of points in this movie where I'm like got my fingers crossed hoping this kid gets hurt. At this point there are a few parts that almost got a chuckle out of me. There's this guy who uh, gets punched and flies out of the window. It's like a crazy stuntman flying out of a window. There's a scene where a guy's standing on a board and Dom DeLuise who is a large man jumps on it and fucking propels the guy out of the window. That's sort of comical. I'll give it that. There's, you know, three seconds of the movie that's pseudo entertaining. Hey, don't call Bonzo stupid. Bonzo? Yeah, I named him Bonzo. And now they're locked up in a third world prison because of this little fucking asshole kid. Also, the monkey talks now. That's right. Banana, 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 banana. Bonzo, we're going to sleep here tonight, all right? Tomorrow morning, I'll just try and find a way for us to get back to the safari park, and we'll get you back home, okay? Now they have to get him back home. You, you know what would have made this whole situation easier? Um... I, I, it's, it sounds crazy, but it, it, maybe if you hadn't kidnapped him out of the fucking nature preserve where you weren't supposed to take him to begin with and commit some sort of like international crime. And there's no character development either. Like, it goes from this is my fucking monkey to we gotta set this monkey free and I'm like the snap of a finger. It, it like... In a matter of seconds, he goes from this selfish little fucking prick to an altruistic hero who's ready to save the day. It's become Free Willy. I, this is the kind of thing that could only be written by a man who came up with an entire movie script in five minutes based on having access to a monkey. I told you to stop, Bonzo. Ah. Oh, Jesus Christ. So this monkey has developed an extensive vocabulary in a matter of hours. You want me to swing on this thing? <laughs> Too high for me, Bonzo. I, I can't. <laughs> Are you sure it's safe, Bonzo? <laughs> Taking safety tips from a monkey? That's great. Yeah, let's just go swinging over this fucking crevasse. Why not? I mean, uh, I mean, what exactly is he doing here? I mean, look below him. There's like a fucking 70 foot drop. So he let go. He's going on the thing. Like, how is he? How, what's his plan? He's just going to stop. The momentum's going to stop and he's not going to be able to just climb down the, the the tree he's gonna fall obviously right well maybe not because this is a kid's film <laughs> well he wakes up and there are these scorpions all over him and uh, is it fucked up that i'm really like on the side of the scorpions hoping that they sting him is that fucked up uh, because I'm really hoping the scorpions sting him. You know, this monkey loves him so much, he is really taking his fucking sweet time to even consider going down there to help him. He's just looking like... I don't know. I don't know. Bonzo no know what to do. Uh. This fucking kid should be dead. Look at that fall. He should be fucking dead or paralyzed, but he's got no broken bones, no fractures, no concussions, no contusion. There's not a fucking scratch on him. But no, he's just thirsty, so maybe he should drink some water uh, that's full of lethal bacteria. Oh, he's fading. 
He's fading. Maybe I manifested it. He's he's gonna perish. Guys, I think the moral of this story is don't be a stupid fucking asshole who steals a monkey and decides to swing over a 70 foot crevice and fall and then drink malaria water. So of course the rest of the gang find him in the middle of nowhere in an enormous continent. He's burning up with fever. <laughs> See, no problem at all from the should be fatal fall that he took. Just the life-threatening microbial infection that he has. Fingers crossed hard that this third world hospital is inequipped to handle it. So this nun just listens to his heartbeat and determines that everything's gonna be fine. He, that he just needs to sleep it off. No mention of the 60 foot fall that he took or the scorpion stings or the fucking lethal bacteria that he has ingested. Just listen to his heart. Perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. I'm so Jesus Christ. Why do I do this to myself? Why, why do I decide? Why do I even fucking, why do I own this? Why did I look at this and say, eh, looks like it'll be a winner. Maybe I should watch this. Why did I get 10 minutes into it and then decide to keep watching it? I could have just reviewed something else. I, so Mr. McIntosh shows up to capture the monkey at the hospital. They get the monkey and the monkey seems kind of happy. He goes willingly with them to the circus. Now, as this bastard kid and Dom DeLuise are about to leave the country, you know, the boat's gonna leave soon, but they see a parade for the circus. The circus is coming. The circus is coming. Oh no, let's not get on the boat. We gotta go to the circus. Look, a parade! So they go to the circus and they see this monkey who went there willingly and they're pissed. But you know what? Fuck this kid. Fuck this kid. He was super excited about seeing all these caged elephants and giraffes and tigers that are all being abused and exploited. But when he sees the animal that he kidnapped, kidnapped, and claimed ownership over, everything changes. I, I really hate this fucking kid. He's the villain of the movie, not Mr. McIntosh. This little fuckhead kid, he's the villain. He ruined this monkey's life. The monkey was doing fine, swinging around in his trees and his habitat with his family. And here comes this fucking kid who decided, I want to steal a monkey. Because I'm fucking, I deserve to have a monkey. I want a monkey. I'm going to steal this monkey. It's suicide. I don't care. I'm going to go and save fun. No, no, no. We'll get arrested. Don't you understand? So then he's like freaking out in the crowd and he yells at the monkey and then the monkey freaks out. But the monkey was fine before he did this. Oh, look, there's some exploited elephants. No one gives a fuck about them. Now, this is their plan is that they're gonna hold these fucking poor clowns at gunpoint because this is way less problematic than, you know, letting this monkey go and uh, make all of the children happy. For fuck's sake, man. Water as a weapon knocks dudes down with water. Oh, this. God damn it. So there's this whole circus scene where they climb into an impossible to escape situation, then somehow avoid attempted murder. It just goes on for way too long and it's not funny at all, which is a running theme in this movie. Not being funny. Also, did I mention that the monkey is an expert equestrian? Because of course he is.
holy shit no no fucking way they're not they're not going there they they wouldn't fucking dare you wouldn't fucking dare and here we go Wow. Just fucking wow. This monkey, who is an expert equestrian, is flying a fucking plane. Also an expert in the field of aviation. He's read a lot of books, taken a lot of classes, Jesus Christ. Jesus fucking Christ. Stop the plane! Bonzo, take off! Yeah! <laughs> this, this is happening. This is happening. This is a real movie. This is uh, I'm done. I'm fucking done. I'm officially fucking done with this movie. At, at this point when I was watching it, I actually fell asleep and I woke up a little while later and I had to back it up and finish it. It's that that's how fucking done I was with this movie at that point. And then, you know, I turned it back on just in time for one more zany chase scene. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, man. That monkey just jumped 30 feet onto that boat. 30 feet onto that boat. <sighs> what am I doing with my fucking life? So the movie ends with this bastard kid smuggling this monkey out of the continent of Africa. It's a beautiful message for children. Only a fucking canon movie. Only a fucking canon movie could be this wild. I, w I went into this. I wanted to like this movie. It seemed like it could have been fun. But that fucking kid. It, as soon as I saw that fucking kid. And the first time he opened his goddamn mouth. I, I fucking knew I was going to hate it. It just ruined it for me. It flatlined immediately. I, I hated this fucking movie, and I'm positive that it's because of the kid. The fucking kid. If it wasn't for the kid, I may have liked the movie. I may have thought that the monkey thing was uh, hilariously bad. You know, bad, but hilariously bad. I could have thought it was a fun movie, but... It... Uh, he, 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 I mean, I fell asleep watching it at one point, so that should say it all. And I didn't fall asleep because I was tired. I fell asleep because I was so fucking bored that it put me to sleep. I don't think that this movie's on DVD. I think it's only on VHS. And thank God that it's not on DVD. That way, people will be saved from possibly being tricked into watching this fucking piece of shit movie. And that's going bananas. Going fucking bananas. A movie that I hope you never have to sit through. I hope you never make the decision to sit through it. If so, then I'm sorry. This is also the angriest review that I've done. I hope I don't do one that's this angry again. But I just hated this fucking movie so much. Like, doing angry reviews isn't the thing. That, that's not my thing. I'm not an angry reviewer. But this fucking movie would make anyone angry. It's... God! Well, guys, thanks so much for coming and hanging out and listening to me ramble on about this stupid fucking movie. Uh, as always, I appreciate you hanging out with me. Um, go like and subscribe and all of that. Hopefully... Next time we'll have something more entertaining and fun. And I'm going to leave you with this great 
bit about the making of going bananas. Menachem's sitting next to an orangutan and deciding whether to sign the orangutan to put him under contract. And he turns to the woman who's head of publicity and says, would you fuck this monkey? Yeah. <laughs>